Welcome back to JB Reviews. I have a 2023 Ram 2500 Rebel on this side, and I also have the 2500 Power Wagon. Now, in this video, I've always wanted to test these trucks side by side. Now, I preferred to have a gas Rebel, but unfortunately, the one that they had did get sold. So now we have to do the Cummins against the Hemi, which some of you guys are probably okay with. Now, if you guys don't know this, for 2023, they did add the Rebel, and this truck does have an off road tire except it's in a 20 inch wheel. The power wagon has a 17 inch wheel and these are gonna be basically 32.7 inch tires and these are like 33 and a half basically. So let's go ahead and start with the power wagon first and then we'll drive the Rebel next. I've actually had a chance to tow with these trucks in the past and Mikey P, one of my good friends, he owns this truck so that's actually the one I towed with but I do like this slight refresh it's not really a true refresh they just updated a few things like the mirrors the gauge cluster things like that i'm gonna go ahead and reset the fuel economy right here and we're gonna go ahead and get down the road now if you watched the last video i did on this truck 410 horsepower 429 pound feet of torque eight speed transmission 410 rear end let's see how it does for zero to 60. all right here we go really shocked by that like I don't think that the Cummins is gonna get better that's probably one of the best Ram runs I've done so far now this truck is not light either I mean it, it's not heavy compared to other trucks like my Chevy is really heavy but this truck is was I think has a I'm trying to think probably weighs somewhere in the 7100 pound range so it's not a heavy heavy pickup but yeah i'm actually really happy with that performance 410 out back and obviously that's going to really help a little bit more in the top end but yeah i have to show you guys the rpm in the second i'm at 67 miles an hour i'm at about 2000 rpms the same so yeah let me go ahead and switch camera so you guys can see what it looks like on the RPMs. Right, I'm going to go ahead and set the cruise. It's at 60 miles an hour. Yeah, we're we're not too far from 2,000 RPMs, so let's go ahead and get to 65. So we're over. Now we probably aren't in eighth gear. No, we're not in 8th gear yet. We're still kind of hanging in 7th. Now we're in 8th gear. Now we're just under 2,000. And let's go to 70. Transmission is really smooth. This has uh, lane keep assist too, so I can sometimes feel the steering wheel kind of turning me. So yeah, we're just over 2,000 RPMs at 70 miles an hour. So here are the numbers for the power wagon. 4,750 pounds is the gross axle rating out front. The rear is 6,200 pounds, which is gonna be slightly higher than the Cummins Rebel. And then gross fuel equipment is gonna be lower at 8,565. All in payload capacity is gonna be 1,401 pounds. Here's a fun fact. The power wagon is $100 more than the Rebel. Or is it the opposite direction? No, no, I think the power wagon's more expensive. Yeah, the power wagon's more expensive. Now, obviously, this truck does have, like, front and rear lockers. It does have sway bar disconnect up front. Um, has the worn winch already built in. You can get the winch with the Rebel 2, but it comes standard here. Now, a truck that a lot of people sleep on is the Tradesman power wagon. I've never seen one before. I almost... I almost ordered one at one point because I had a friend who said that he would probably buy it from me in a year's time, but you know, I don't trust my friends to do stuff like that, so I wasn't gonna buy that truck. So I figured, eh, 
maybe in the future I'll find one, but I've never seen one before ever. Now, one thing I have to mention real quickly, and we're going back the opposite direction, I'll show you guys. But the tires definitely have some noise. Um, the dirt tracks are hit or miss. It seems like on the Chevy side of the house, the dirt tracks are loud, but on the Fords, they're not loud. And some of the Rams are not loud. So I don't, under I don't understand that. So they're not, they're not loud, loud on this truck, but I think after about five or 10,000 miles, when they break in, they're gonna be loud. We just made it to the midpoint, 11.6 MPG, six and a half miles driven at nine minutes. Now we're gonna go back the opposite direction and we'll see where we end off at. But I'm gonna show you guys some of the sound next, that way you have an idea of how loud it is and we'll compare it with the Rebel. Not bad, 63, and that's with acceleration too. I was gonna see how loud it was, and that was probably only like maybe 40% throttle. But now the tires, about 65 miles an hour, that's where you hit the tires at. And by the window, 67 decibels. And as always, low back there at 63 decibels. Now surprisingly, you know, this truck does have a slight lift and you can really see it when they're side by side in a thumbnail. But this truck doesn't feel goofy. Like, you know, this is a big truck and I mean, there's some sway, but it's not a really uncontrollable sway. Like it's actually really well tuned. Like I think it's probably because of the bill scenes. And this has 30, basically 33 inch tires. But the steering does feel a little loose. And that's just something that I've noticed. Some trucks have it, some trucks don't. But yeah, you can definitely feel the lightness in the steering wheel. Here's the RPMs at 80 miles an hour. We're just under 2,500 RPMs. And that's gonna be because of the 410 out back. And then here's some of the temperatures right here. That coolant's at 217, trans at 169, and then oil temp is 226. I like that. Not bad at all. We just made it back to the dealer, and I want to show you guys pretty much where we ended off at. So 13.4 MPG, 13.6 miles driven at 18 minutes. There's a Ford Expedition here. It looks like they're off-road one. I can't remember what they call that. And we will pretty much end off at the same spot. So let's go ahead and jump in the Rebel and see how it does. All right, so I just reset the fuel economy back at the dealer. Oh, I need to get my um, draggy set up. I cannot forget to do that because, yeah, we won't be negative today. But something I've noticed, if you have a 2023, let me know in the comment section with your thoughts. Do you have a long crank? I've noticed on these 2023s, the cranks are like, they're long. They're longer than what I remember being on my 2019 and all the way up to 2022. But it's probably not that big of a deal. It's just, I know like people on YouTube, uh, PD Diesel, if you guys don't follow him, he's someone that's really good. He's been kind of transitioning over to Ford trucks, which is kind of interesting. So, you know, he's a huge Ram fanboy. Now he's kind of slowly becoming a Ford guy. And he's just had a lot of issues with the 2022s. So, yeah, I just noticed that long crank and I was like, hmm. But yeah, I just reset the uh, draggy. So we're gonna have this ready to go when we get to the spot. And man, feels good driving a diesel again. I kind of miss this. And you know what they say, can't beat a Cummins. Now here's the standard output Cummins. Now this engine has not been changed since 2019. So it still has 370 horsepower, 850 pound foot of torque, made it to a 68 RP transmission. Despite what you hear online, this is a good transmission. I don't know what anyone says in the comment section. Most guys I've ever met that own this truck who do hot shot have had no issues up to 400,000 miles. Now it does require you to obviously do your maintenance, but apart from that, this is a good setup here. 373 gears out back. And I think that's it. Let's see what the zero to 60 looks like. Here we go. 30. 
told you that 64 was moving <laughs> but this wasn't too far behind it did good actually say what you will about the 68 rv this transmission is great confident feels good shifts good um at 65 miles an hour no road noise from the tires let me drop back down to about 60 though so you guys can see the rpm stuff oh yeah that's just nice not even at 1500 rpms 70 you see that too it doesn't shift it stays in the gear which is six gear it don't it don't need to shift because it has all that power <laughs> i love this truck you can't beat a diesel boat you just can't but yeah i mean you're man you're so far under 2000 now so once you're going 80 miles now you'll probably see we're right at 2000 so we're about to get to the midpoint here and i'll check in with the philly comment show you guys where we're at actually right there you see redwood road exit three that's where we're going to pretty much end off and go back the opposite direction are you surprised doing better on mpg about the same miles driven i think it was like six and a half for the gasser but yeah no surprise here guys this is a really good performing truck and too bad you can't delete without potentially getting in trouble because you could probably pick up another three or four mpgs on these trucks we're gonna go ahead and head back the opposite direction and i'll show you guys the sound level inside the truck About 65, 64. 69, so it's a little bit louder on the window. Sixty-two, sixty-three out back. So about the same there, but it's a little bit louder on the window here. Yeah, this is such a great performing truck. You can't beat it you're humming along I'm going 70 miles an hour I'm like at about 1500 rpms I'm in six gear just doesn't get any better than this so here's some of the temperatures here's that oil tire pressures now something that the gas truck doesn't have is that guy right there exhaust brake but uh, let me go ahead and show you guys. Let me get over. So we're just under 2,000 RPMs. We're like at 1,900. I'm trying to get to 80 here. Yep, there it is, 80. We're still under. That ain't bad. That is not bad. And here's where we are for fuel economy. Doing pretty good. Now, as far as the numbers go on the Cummins, Gross axle weight rating is going to be higher because it's being a diesel, 6,000. And the rear is slightly lower at 6,040 compared to the power wagon. And they do reduce the gross fuel weight rating to 9,680 pounds. It's normally 10,000. So all in payload capacity comes in at 1,760 pounds, which is still higher than the gas power wagon. Here's where we ended off at last time. 16.3. 13.8 miles driven 21 minutes now i did have to come around and loop back so i'm going to use 16.4 because that's pretty much where i ended off at so what do you guys think about that no one should be surprised by the mpg because obviously diesel is just more efficient compared to gasoline but the zero to 60 is something that i was surprised by i was expecting the cummins to catch it at about 60 but it never did and even at a quarter mile it did not but I have to say, I do like the tires on the Rebel a little bit better. Despite them being the exact same brand, the size seems to be a little bit more quieter compared to these. I don't know why. I mean, they're both Duratracks. But listen, these were a lot more quieter, even at 75 miles an hour. But about 60, 65, you start to really hear these starting to hum. So yeah, like I said, same tire. And normally when you have more sidewall, the tires are a little bit quieter, but I guess for some weird reason, these wheels must be 
a uh, better quality. Now I'm gonna knock RAM one last time. 20 by eight, come on guys. 20 by eight and a half minimum. See you guys in the next video.